Welcome to Inquisition. We finally arrived in the modern days with beautiful things such as war, exploding temples, a character creator without proper hair or beards. We start right off the bat with you being trapped in some mysterious plane that bears a resemblance with a pub of the 19th century. Unlike the pubs of that time, however, you are promptly being chased on by some giant ass spider slash demon hybrids and can only escape by climbing a mountain and then touching a lady made of light. Fuck me, this will be some trippy shit. You arrive in the real world and pass out, only to awaken shortly after in a sex dungeon and get interrogated by Cassandra and Liliana about your severe case of wanker's cramp. Shortly after she brings you outside and shows you some light column reaching up to the sky that comes from a nearby rave party. It's your job to turn off that light, otherwise the electricity bill is going to rip a giant breach in their wallet. I'll see myself out. On your way there, your case of wanker's cramp gets progressively worse, because apparently you think cranking one out while walking is a nice idea. Shortly after you make the acquaintance of some demons, and then meet the future god king of everything. Also this wanker is there too. Solus has no concept of personal space and grabs your hand, but he evidently didn't pay attention in school, because the salute he wanted you to make was done with the right arm. Turns out your wanker's cramp is magical and is able to plug more holes than you might have thought. With those three following you, you make your way up to the temple to plug the biggest one yet, which after a bit of struggle you manage to do. Not long after, you wake up from yet again passing out. Seems to be a hobby of yours at this point. This time however in an actual bed, not a dungeon. It's progress. Cassandra wants to see you, and walking there the entire bloody village is surprisingly well organized to make a passage for you to go exactly where you need to be and nowhere else. Free will is optional in this world so far. Oh, and the people also took up the practice of calling you a herald. Or was it herald? One of the two, doesn't matter really. When you enter the council room, you are confronted by some random arse that you met earlier that blames you for blowing up a couple hundred people. Cassandra tells him to shut the fuck up and then goes on to slam poetry, quite literally. She declares the religious fanatics reborn, but doesn't even want to lead the fuckers herself. Also, somehow, likely magically, these two idiots appear out of nowhere. We have Josephi Montillier, uh, walking, and sadly, talking dress that is about as interesting as reading the terms of service, as if the clothes weren't enough. And then we have Cullen Rutherford, who for some reason qualifies to lead the army with his amazing track record of getting captured by men wearing dresses, and then serving someone with the tendency to sniff paint thinner. Since your club isn't recognized by anyone in any capacity, like really, you don't even have a janitor, Liliana suggests going to some shithole located in a place that is literally called Hinterlands and talk to a random chantry mother. Very smart move. She suggests that you go to Val Royo, the capital of Orlais, and talk with the people there, since they're doubting that you've been sent by the maker, something I never actually fucking stated. Aside from some old lady getting punched and you being called some names, nothing of value happens in the capital. So thanks for the suggestion, Mother Gazelle. On your way out, you get invited to Redcliffe to talk with the mages, as well as being able to pick up these two spastics. Vivian, who thinks that she's some really hot shit because she used to be the first enchilada of some random circle at the ass end of nowhere, who I turned down ice cold in my last nine playthroughs because I hate her fucking guts, and this local autist that lost her ability to speak in coherent sentences at the age of nine when she was thrown off a roof 14 times. Accompanied by a collective three brain cells, you return to Haven and get informed that you have to plug the big one from the beginning again, but you need more power for that, so you have to get either the religious fanatics or the failed freedom fighters. Also, there are another two idiots for you to get from the wilderness. First off is a sentient beard that somehow grew a body around it, who calls himself Blackwall when the fucker doesn't even have black hair, and second is a walking handlebar with pre-installed SM program that is also a spy for the Kunari so you gotta decide who to ally yourself with, mages or templars. To get started with the mages, you have to head to Redcliffe, where you meet these two indie punk band members in the local tavern. His son has had a few too many lines, so they decide to push the meeting to a later date. The son, however, gave you a note to meet in the Chantry, which you do right away. In there, you meet this medieval hair model, who tells you that Alexius, that is, the father, by the way, manipulated time itself to arrive in Redcliffe before you did. His proof for this claim is telling you that he knows what he's talking about, he helped develop that magic. Really convincing, you absolute spanner. 
The son from before also arrives and tells you that his dad is in a cult that is obsessed with you, which is nothing unusual to be honest, happens to me daily. So to get the aid of the mages, you have to get into the castle to negotiate with him, which is a decoy to bring some of your people that will murder everyone. Things go to shit and you get sent a year into the future with Dorian. Making your way through yet another bloody dungeon, you find your allies and have a nice little chat with Fiona, who is cosplaying as a Lyrium vein. Since you missed the entire year, the world has been fucked over by Corypheus and the breach now covers the entire world. Nice job. So you make your way to pick up this retard, who tells you that Cory killed the Empress and defeated the South with a demon army. After that, you confront Alexius and his son, who is now more of a pet monkey. He loses his shit, right after Liliana from the future, with some serious skin condition, cuts his throat and you gotta fight him. Following that, the Elder One comes and you have to get back to your time. You do exactly that and find yourself just where Alexius threw you into the future, with him surrendering immediately. Powerful matches on my arse. Thinking that it's all over, you get a surprise visit from the monarch of Ferelden, who quickly tells Fiona and her mage followers to pack their shit and fuck off. Then it's up to you whether you want to enslave or ally yourself with the mages. But in case you hate mages, you can of course also go for the Templars. For that you will have to bring an army of pet nobles to annoy them until they open the gate. You're asked to reveal your gen- I mean priorities, in terms of factions, and then go to a room with a Templar officer that had a couple too many Bloody Marys. Shit goes to hell and you're gonna murder everyone that wears the color red and is a meth addict. Your goal is this man here, who you catch atop some stairs, but turns out that it's actually a demon and it pulls you into some serious drug trip. While you're inside your own mind tripping balls, you encounter a walking psychology degree. Eventually you get back to the real world, where the demon reveals its true appearance, which is frighteningly close to what I look like when I wake up. It hides behind a magical barrier, and after you collect some Templar officers and evidence that Cory wants to murder the Empress and gather a demon army, the barrier gets purged. Together with the living university degree, you face the demon, kill it and then get to choose what to do with the Templars. Either disband their order and have them join you, or offer to ally with them so they can rebuild. No matter which one you go for, you end up plugging the big one again, this time for good. While having a party afterwards, however, Corypheus finally shows his face and attacks the village with whoever you didn't recruit and a companion from the corresponding quest shows up to warn you when they're already at your damn gate. You evacuate the people, shoot some trebuchets and get your ass handed to you by a dragon. Then, in order for the people to flee through the mountains, you go out in a valiant last stand, where you end up getting insulted by a 3 meter tall grandpa that looks like a burnt matchstick. You escape him because he throws you right in front of a trebuchet lever and then you stumble through snow for a while before your people find you. But since they're all assholes that couldn't even let you sleep off your headache, they argue and then for some bloody reason start singing at the behest of an old lady. After you're done standing there awkwardly like they just sang happy birthday to you, Solas pulls you to the side and tells you that Corypheus's ball is elven. On the plus side, he leads you to your future castle. Arriving there, you also get promoted to leader of the spastics since no one else wanted to do it. Still, Varric and Josephi have some stuff lined up for you, so you talk to both of them. Josephi first, who tells you that you need to go to the Winter Palace to save the Empress from getting assassinated, and she's already working on getting you there. After turning the dialogue volume back on, because fuck that accent, you head to Varric, who magically pulls Hawk out of his ass. They tell you about Cory a bit and how they have a Warden contact not far from Skyhold. At this point you can decide what to do. Either find out what the fuck is going on with the Wardens, or attend a fancy party and meddle in politics. Let's go Wardens first, because Hawk. The Warden contact in Crestwood tells you that Cory is more or less immortal, and also that all Grey Wardens from Olay and Ferelden are going nuts, because they think it's time to commit suicide by Darkspawn. Because of that, the Warden Commander decided to go through with a blood magic ritual, to summon demons and invade the Autobahn before they all die. Brilliant plan. Fucking retard. So you go to the western approach, to a Devinter ritual tower, where you meet this smug bastard, who throws a few insults but gets his ass handed to him and then flees. You follow him to this lovely castle right on the edge of a cleft that is so enormous it's just known as the Abyssal Rift. Or Reach. People can't seem to make up their minds about that. Anyway, you assault the damn thing, because just knocking on the door and bringing a welcome to the neighborhood cake would be far too much to ask. But turns out that they are slightly busy with killing each other to summon the great evil one. Just like my neighbors. Lovely people those. Really quiet usually. So the pretentious bastard pulls a dragon out of his ass and reveals that he lied to the warden commander. Shocking, I know. She gets mushed to a pulp, the bridge collapses, and you open a rift and find yourself in the Fate, 
physically. There you meet an old woman that isn't who she claims to be, recover some of your repressed childhood memories, and then decide to sacrifice either Hawk or the Warden to appease the great nightmare demon in order for you to get out of the fate. You land at the courtyard where just a few moments ago people were busy with ritual sacrifices and hold a speech that ends with either telling the collective wardens to fuck off or join you. After that you earn yourself a break and you reward yourself by going to a party with the entire court of Orlais. I can think of several things that would be more enjoyable and hacking off your hand to slap yourself in the balls with it is at the very bottom of that list. You are invited to attend by this wanker, Grand Duke Gaspar de Chalotz, who asks you for support to become Emperor. You go inside and get announced to the current leader of Orly, Empress Celine, and also meet her totally not suspiciously nervous cousin, Grand Dutch Ass Florian. Because you are unable to pull the broomstick out of your ass, like ever, you go around and investigate the entire fucking palace instead of getting drunk and puking on a duke after insulting four different noble families. You meet a goth milf who tells you some cryptic shit, as well as the character that used to be important in that book that no one read because we all know Last Flight was better. So you collect some blackmail material on all of them, kill a few people and then have the choice of how to deal with the totally not suspicious duchess betraying you. Turns out she works for Cory and is there to kill Celine, so you can let her do exactly that and then deal with the rest. Or you can publicly expose her and she'll be taken away in handcuffs. Or just stop her yourself. At the end of it all you can decide who rules Ole. Celine, Celine together with Briala, Gaspar, Briala through Gaspar, or they can all have a public truce. Do what you want, I'm not your dad. Also the goth milf joins you. Since you fucked Cory's plans, he decided it's best for him and his lackeys to move into the woods so they can have a sad circle jerk. You go after him and end up in the ruins of some elven temple that were built around a puddle called Well of Sorrows. In essence, you're raiding the local art exhibit on prehistoric emo culture, with the express purpose of drinking their collective tears, which will grant you the knowledge of all emos. While doing exactly that, you discover that some of the elves are still alive and are defending their gist pool. You can now either ally yourself with them after solving some of their dogshit puzzles, or you can murder them all to get what you want. Either way, you end up meeting the leader of the enemy faction, which would be the meth addict from Dragon Age 2 if you went for the mages or missing orthodontal treatments on legs if you went for the Templars. When you're done dealing with them, you can eventually let someone lick the puddle. Either yourself or the goth milf, your choice of who becomes even more damaged in the head than they already are. So then you go back to Skyhold and have to solve the final problem of figuring out how to deal with Cory's dragon. You might think that that's not a big deal, since I've literally been walking around deliberately searching for dragons and killing them for fun, but no. Since this dragon is infected with leprosy or some shit, that somehow makes it impossible to kill on your own. This can play out a few different ways, depending on who licked the puddle and whether or not you banged the goth milf in Origins. But in the end, you end up with either Morrigan being able to turn into a dragon herself, or you get a pet dragon that will fight for you after you beat the shit out of it. Now with all of that sorted out, and not a second earlier, Cory decides to go back where it all started, the rave party atop the mountain. Then he lifts half the fucking mountain into the air, which honestly makes you wonder how the fuck can I beat someone like that? Because I'm not able to do that shit. Even with the power of an elven god orb, all I can do is a botched Nazi salute. A bit of fighting happens, and how could it be otherwise, you defeat the great evil with a super badass voice line that totally doesn't make me want to strangle a player character. Just telling him to go fuck himself would have been better. Hell, saying nothing would have been better than that. Well. With his death, you fall back to the ground and destroy the orb in the process. Solas is a sad, sad puppy and fucks off while you're not watching. Back to Skyhold you go and hold a small party. And the last thing you see is this bastard meeting up with Flemeth, who reveals that Solas is Fen Harrell. Up until Trespasser, that was actually a real dick move. Fuck, even now that we have and finished Trespasser, it's even more of a dick move. But that's a story for another time. The only one remaining. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to consider subscribing, since I upload about as often as I'm funny, or follow me on Twitter for updates and thoughts of all kinds.